Hey, I, 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 I'm coming across this word an awful lot in popular culture today, dystopian. Uh, dystopian is a fictional community or society that is undesirable or frightening. Frightening. It is often treated as an antonym of utopia. Yeah, utopia, dystopia. Anyway, this goes back to uh, you know George Orwell, 1984, and all that other stuff. I'm not going to get into this because I'm not a. I'm not really into. I'm not. Well, you know what? Maybe one of these days I'll get into a big. We'll get have a big dystopian chat, and we'll talk about the future, but. You know, when I was a kid in um, the 60s, <laughs> the 60s, I'm so old, we, I had a very positive view of the future. I did. You know, the future was going to be something bright and great and wonderful, flying cars and rockets to Mars, flying cars and rockets to Mars, the future of Come o day. You know, when I was a kid, it was a very positive future. I mean, we were, I was watching the space Things, you know, the Apollo, the Gemini, the Mercury, we landed on the moon. We had, this, the, then we in the 70s and stuff, we had the space shuttle, the 80s and the space shuttle. And it was all a very positive thing. Things were going to get bigger and better. The future was going to be a better place. Things were going to be better. It was very optimistic. Now, there was, you know, the Cold War and the threat of nuclear annihilation and stuff like that. I mean, it wasn't a just wonderfully optimistic period altogether. There were negative things back then, too. I, you know, if you remember that, uh, you know, scary stuff. Uh, but there was also a very positive view of the future, I think, at least for a kid growing up in the 60s. Today, I was, I've been watching a number of videos, and one of the things I was getting into the other day was... You know, we don't have that positive view of the future anymore, especially for kids today. This is a good video called Second, a channel called Second Thought. I've been watching them quite a lot lately. Is the U.S. becoming a dystopia? I really recommend you watch this 1655. It's only, it'll take you 16 minutes. If you watch it at double speed, it'll only take you eight minutes. But it's a very interesting video, and I do recommend you watch it. it again, it just kind of shows you that... You know, mm, the future just, the, the dystopian movies. All, all, you know, when I was a kid, the movies about the future were often, not always, there was Soylent Green and stuff like that, but there were often positive, wonderful things about what the great future would be. Uh, there was some dystopian stuff back in the 70s, don't, with the gas crisis in the Middle East. Yes, that's when it kind of started. But today... You look at the future, and especially in popular culture, and there's a lot of dystopian stuff. You know, a lot of movies today, the future's bad. It's zombies and <laughs> stuff like that, you know? Uh, shortages and zombies and people, you know, a huge underclass of people. And there's a lot of movies like that. Anyway, watch that, watch that video. Second thought is the U.S. becoming a dystopia? Is the world becoming a dystopia? Is, a dystopia is what they should, probably should have called it. Why this applies to nomadic life. You know, again, I try to talk about nomadic life here. And I think that that whole trend of people now living in vehicles because they can't afford apartments. Now, we have two types of nomads, okay? And it's kind of... We mix them up here a lot, but there are definitely two types of nomads. There are nomads that want to live out on the road. You know, that's their desire. It's not, they, they're not forced into it. It's a choice. They are tired of being in one place. They don't want to live in an apartment or a house or they, for whatever reason, they don't like the bill wheel. They don't, you know, and they choose. They want to be out traveling and, and living like that. That's a decision they've made and uh, that's fine. That's cool. It's just, you know, but the dystopian side of that or the people that are being forced into nomadic living because they can't afford a house or an apartment or whatever. And we're seeing more and more people that are living like that, you know, and that whole dystopian nature of nomadic living is uh is getting bigger and bigger, you know, people, I, and again, some people say, I think some people say, hey, I really, this is my choice, but if you look at it really carefully, they're being forced into it, you know, I'm not going to go into any particular nomads here, 
you know, but we, you know, they'll, 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 they'll probably say, yeah, I decided to do this. But in, in, when you look at their history and you look at what went on in their life before they became a nomad, it's kind of almost clear that, that this particular nomad is unemployable and can't fit into society in the terms of making money. So he gets, or he or she gets into nomadic living. And then of course, there's always YouTube. And YouTube is the golden ray of light there. The golden, the golden, the golden, the, the, the golden shaft of light. Hey, you know what? I can live on the road and I can also perhaps survive on the road through YouTube and its glorious uh, AdSense, etc. And PayPal and Patreon and the Chip Red Shirt and Baba Daboo and Amazon links and GoFundMe and whatever. There's all that stuff out there today. So it is interesting how I think nomadic life does, it has a definite place in a dystopian future of America and, and possibly the whole world, I don't know. You know, I mean, we've seen nomads throughout history, that nomadic cultures all over the place throughout human history. And we're seeing it again here in the United States, I think in a major way, we have more and more people are becoming nomadic. You know, uh, what we see in the big cities today are people living in, um, you know, old beat up uh, RVs, you know, literally that don't even run just simply because they're using them as housing. You see that in a lot of cities, Seattle, uh, here Vancouver, uh, especially on the West Coast because you can, uh, LA, because you can, you know, pretty much li live all year long without too much heat. If you live on the East Coast, that's kind of hard in the winter to live like that. But I'm sure people on the East Coast are doing that too. But you, you get an old junked up RV and you manage to find a place to park it like an industrial area and then you live in it and pretty much you're just, that's your home, you know. Uh, that's happening more and more today. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, again, we, we look at the popular culture, we look at the internet. We look at these companies like Google and Facebook and social media stuff and, and, and we see total data mining where you can't do anything without being watched and everybody's profiling everything you do and there's a big distrust to government. You know, we're seeing a lot of that now. You know, a lot of people are, well, there's a whole big issue of the, the, the vaccine and why people aren't getting it. And a lot of it is just because people don't, just don't trust what the government's saying. They don't trust what the media is saying. They just don't trust that. And that all fits into a dystopian future in this country, you know? And the nomadic lifestyle fits into it. And people always ask me, Dave, Dave, why are you so interested in this? Why do you kind of gravitate toward covering nomads and stuff like this? And it is fun to watch them on a day-to-day -day basis, no question about that. But it's also um, part of a, you know, a scary, frightening future, I think, that we're, we're heading towards, if we're not already there. I don't know. A second thought. It's a good channel. Watch that video there. Uh, um, yeah, it, uh, let's see here if I can find it again. No, I can't find it. Right? Is, is the U.S. becoming a dystopia? Dystopia. Very good video there. Uh, it came out, it was just released a couple days ago, two days ago. Uh, U.S. becoming a dystopia, August 13th, 2020, 2021. So I thought this was a very good video. I got to give it a thumbs up. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's a, cer certainly food for thought. Let me know what you think. Watch that video and let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Vlog Under.